Hi, my name is Kevin Jones, and in this walkthrough, we'll see how we can use the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as a service provider with Azure Active Directory as the identity provider. In previous walkthroughs, we've seen how to use the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as an identity provider inside Identity Server. We're now going to see how we use Azure Active Directory as the identity provider but still use the rock solid knowledge SAML component as the service provider against Azure Active Directory. So in this walkthrough, we'll do this. We'll create a web application that will require authentication, or at least part of it will require authentication. And we'll want to use SAML to supply that authentication. You already have Azure Active Directory set up. So we need to set that up as the identity provider for this application. We'll configure our application so that it uses Azure Active Directory and redirects to Azure Active Directory to authenticate. When this authentication is done, we'll redirect back to the application. And the service provider side of the SAML communication will be managed by the RSK SAML component. So I'll be using JetBrains Rider to create the project, but we'll just be creating an MVC project. So you can do exactly the same thing inside Visual Studio. So this is the JetBrains Rider welcome dialog. So from here, I can do new solution. I want an ASP.NET Core web application. I want to call the solution SAML Azure AD, and I'm going to call the project SP for service provider. And once we have that, you just click on create, and it creates the solution for us. So I want to change one piece of configuration here before we do anything else. And that's just the port the application runs on. And I'm only doing this because it clashes with other ports on this machine. So in here, if I go into my properties and launch settings, currently the application is configured to run on port 5001. And I'm going to change that and just make that port 5002. So before we set up the SAML component, we need some part of the application that requires authentication. So in the code here, I'm going to add a couple of things. In my views directory, if I go to shared and layout, in here, I'm going to add a new link that requires authentication. So if I copy one of these, leave the controller as the home controller, change the action to details, and change the text that appears on the nav bar as details. And then in the home controller, we can add an action that corresponds to that link. So again, we add an action called details, which returns an I action result, and that has a view. Now we only want this view to be available when we've been authenticated. So to this, I need to add the authorized attribute. So now that we have that, I can add a new view to my views home folder. We'll call this details. I'll delete the template it gives me. And then what I'd like to do in here is to list out the claims to get returned after we've been authenticated, just to show that we've been authenticated here. So we'll give this thing a title. We'll put the claims into an unordered list. Now the claims come back in the user claims object. So in here, I can do something like this. I can say at for each bar claim in user.claims. And then I can show the value of each of these claims. So we can say at claim.type and at claim.value. And just to make sure we close off the list item. So I'm now in a position to configure the SAML authentication. So if I go into startup.cs, so the first thing I need to do, as well as saying use authorization, I need to say use authentication. So here we call app.use authentication. Make sure you call this before the call to use authorization. Otherwise you end up in a weird redirect loop. So we want to use the rock solid knowledge SAML component. So to do that, I need to add that using NuGet. So if I go to my project and do manage NuGet packages. So in here we type RSK. And I want to use the RSK.saml component. So I select that, click on add and install that into the project. So now that we have the component installed, we need to configure it. And we'll configure this in a couple of steps. 
we'll add the initial configuration here. Then we'll need to go to Azure AD and set up the application and do some configuration there. And then once we have that, we can come back here and finish off our configuration. So we do the configuration here inside Configure Services. And here, I need to call services.addAuthentication. And this call takes a Lambda, and the parameter to that Lambda is an options object. So I can say options goes to, and then configure the authentication options inside here. So we need to add a couple of things. We need to add what's known as the default authentication scheme. This is just the name of the scheme that we're going to be using. So we say options.default authentication scheme, and we give this a name, and we'll just call ours cookie. We also want to set what's known as the default challenge scheme. And again, this is just a name that we pick. So we'll call our default challenge scheme SAML2. Once we configure the options, we can then further configure the authentication. So to do that, we tell the authentication what cookie to use, and the name of the cookie matches the name above for the default authentication scheme. And then we have to configure SAML. And notice now we're configuring the SAML component from rock solid knowledge. And we do this by calling add SAML2P. This call takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the challenge scheme, and ours was SAML2. And the second parameter is options used to configure SAML2P. So again, we can say options goes to and add some options. So in here, we can configure a few things before we go off and configure Azure AD. The first thing we need is the license. Now you can get this license from rock solid knowledge by going to this URL. And then once you have that license, and I'll be using a demo license here, you can add that information into this configuration. So for me, we have a demo license, and this is my current license key. We can then finish off configuring this part of the component. And to do that, I need to set two further values. I need to set the callback path. And this is the path that Azure AD will call back on into this component as part of the SAML negotiation. And we set this to sign in hyphen SAML. And I also need to tell the component which authentication scheme to use. So to do that, we say options.signin scheme. And this is the name of the scheme that we set above. So this will be cookie. I then want to set one other thing here. Remember, this will be our service provider. And we can set some service provider options. So after we set the signing scheme, I can say options dot service provider options. And this is an SP options object. And inside here, I want to set our ID. This is known as the entity ID. So this is how this service provider will be identified. So I can say entity ID equals, and for this, I'm just going to use our URL. So I'll say HTTPS localhost 5002, and then forward slash SAML. So once I have this, I can now go and configure Azure AD. Okay, so here we are in Azure, and this is my Azure portal home screen. And in here, I want to add an application. So from here, if I go to Enterprise Applications, do New Application, and then Create Your Own Application. And then we have a choice. We can either configure an application proxy. We can register an application to integrate with Azure AD. And it says app you're developing. Or we could integrate any other application you don't find in the gallery. So Azure AD comes with a gallery of applications that you can integrate into Azure for you to use. Now, you might think by looking at this that register an application is the way to go. But in fact, what we want to do is to integrate any other application you don't find in the gallery. So let me give this a name. So I'll call it Azure AD test. And then again, ensuring it's integrate any other application that's checked and click on create. So this takes a few minutes to create, but once it's been created, we can now configure it. So from here, if I go to single sign-on and then go to SAML. And then in here, we can edit the basic SAML configuration. So if I click on edit here, we need to enter two things. We need to enter the entity ID and we need to enter the callback URL. So the entity ID needs to be some unique ID that we're going to use. 
So for this entity ID, I'm going to use that URL. So localhost 5002 forward slash SAML. For the reply URL, this will be the URL of our endpoint. So HTTPS localhost 5002. And then the callback path that we set up when we configured the component. So the value of this will be localhost 5002 forward slash sign in hyphen SAML. So I can save this and close the configuration. And if I refresh this page, then the configuration is now set. So if I scroll down here, we'll see in section three where it says SAML signing certificate, there is a URL and this is the metadata URL for the SAML. So I can grab this and we're going to use that in our application. And in fact, we can browse to this. So if I create a new tab, we can see what's in this metadata. So we have to do one more thing inside Azure AD for this to work we have to assign our user to this application. So back in the configuration screen, if I go to users and groups, I can add a user or a group. I can select a user and there's just myself here. So if I click on myself and click on select and assign, so that's Azure AD fully configured. So back in the component, I can now set the options for the IDP that I'm going to connect to. And there are a few things we need to set. The first of which is the identity provider metadata address. And this is the URL I just grabbed from Azure AD. So that's this value here. Once I have that, I'm then going to set something called the time comparison tolerance. And we'll set this to 120 seconds. So when we do a SAML negotiation, these negotiations are time sensitive and clocks get skewed. So we use this to correct for that clock skew. So once I have both of those values, I can then go and run this code. So we hit the home page of the application here on localhost 5002. And if I click on the details link, it's going to want to take me to that details page and it's going to want to authorize me. Now in this particular browser, I'm already authenticated. So it takes me directly to this details page and shows me all of the claims. So let's see a page where I'm not authenticated. So I go to in private browsing here and hit the application and then click on the details link. It asks me to sign in to Azure. So here I can enter my email address. I can enter my password and click on sign in. I have two FA set on this particular login. So it asks me for the code. I click on verify and then sure enough, it takes me back to the application and lists out all of the claims. So I hope you found this useful and I hope you now understand how to configure Azure Active Directory and the rock solid knowledge SAML component to work together to provide a SAML authentication.